winning trophies. I'm mean, experiencing a lot of those things. Three nil. Can you believe it? Almost lost the cup and you win it. The new European champions, the treble, the dream come true for you. Oh, I can't believe that. I can't believe that. Football, by the hell. But they never give in. And that's the winner. Welcome American Red Devils podcast. I'm John. I'm Alex. And we are bringing you the best Manchester United news from this side of the pond. Four picks against Grossman and two fumbles. What do you see about the Bears? Uh, we shut them down that way? No, we, you know, I mean, we, we, we just, uh, let's, we, the Bears are what we thought they were. What, what, they're what we thought they were. We played them in preseason. Who the hell takes a third game in a preseason like it's bull? We played them in the third game. Everybody played three quarters. The Bears are who we thought they were. And that's why we took the damn field. Now, if you want to crown them, then crown their ass. But they are who we thought they were. And we let them off the hook. Crown them. Crown them. Crown RB Leipzig, sir. They are who we thought they were. What a terrible loss. Absolutely gutted. United crash out of the Champions League. Can't believe it. Beat PSG, beat RB, lose away in Turkey, sir. We beat Bakashir at home. Two losses to finish the group, not good enough. And it was an all-around calamity, especially this match. I think summed it up. Uh, we should have been able to do it. And uh, Manchester United playing on Thursday nights. How are we feeling? Sir, not feeling good. Uh, I think feeling the same way most Manchester United fans are feeling these days. No one's looking forward to Thursday nights in 2021. Um, it's the same thing that's been ailing this team, uh, for the last year. And that's inconsistency, not taking your chances, uh, boneheaded defending at times, not looking like cohesive, not coming out hard enough. You know, it's just, we didn't show the right intensity from the jump. We, they are who we thought they were. Angelino. It's like, apparently he was really good going to the first game. We shut him down. We made him look like a world beater today. Um, the ref had a mar in the first first half. It doesn't really matter. But United didn't show up. It, it sucks. We all feel it, and we kick on to the next one. It's important to get a win on Saturday because you are as only you're only as good as your last game, and everyone's going to be talking about this. Um, especially if we lose on Saturday, they're going to be talking about that. Look, uh, the way we've started matches in the in uh, the league as of late. And, you know, the crazy comebacks and whatnot. Yeah, it's been a thrill ride. You can't do it in the Champions League, right? You know, the Bayerns of the world, the Barca's, et cetera, uh, they're not playing like that to open any match. If you want to take this competition seriously and you're going to be good enough for it to qualify. I mean, we had a tough group. It was a tough group. And we started amazing. But to crumble in the way we did, to not just like the, the excuse that I continue to hear. I mean, the excuse factory is, is run over time is that we couldn't get up for a game in Istanbul. We can't get up for a game against RB Leipzig with our lives on the line in the Champions League. And it says a lot about that team. If you can't get up for pro- arguably the biggest game to date, uh, just absolutely not up to the standards of Manchester United. I think that's why so many fans are so angry worldwide. Um, we're slowly coming to the realization that the uh, – the greatest manager of all time is never going to come back. And uh, we're just going to be kind of stuck through this Liverpool period for a while here until we can find the right owner, find the right boardroom, executive team, manager, scouting, and players to bring Manchester United back to where we should be. Because right now, sir, it ain't coming back anytime soon. Well, it's going to be, uh, you know, it's going to be ups and downs because this team is inconsistent. It's young uh, and they've shown that. And look, they're going to be the difference between us accomplishing things and not. So we're going to have to get things right in the league. If we want to do anything a promise there, we, we you know, we're getting better there. But every, this is going to sting for a long time for a lot of people. Um, there's no two ways about it. We can't really make any excuses to justify the performance. We were in it. I think that's the reason most people are so dejected. It wasn't like the Sevilla game where we were like, that game was just like a whole nother story uh, under Jose. This was like, it was still, we like, blew, you know, completely blew the first half and we were still in it. We all, we all we needed was a draw and we were like, still in it, still in it, still in it. Bruno's still in it. And we didn't make it. And it's just like, we always shoot ourselves in the foot. You're right. The best teams in the world, uh, 
the Bayern Munich of the world, they don't start off and look like shit and then turn lights out. You have to be lights out throughout the game, and that's how you show new mercy because if you give them a, an instant, right, they're going to take advantage of you, Nagelsmann, didn't wear the flash suit, came out with uh, you know, the cool-looking jacket, and all of a sudden you're toast, sir, because no. it's over. No, I saw his outfit. I know, I know. They had his feet. It was like literally a no Willy Wonka suit. We were dead, dead to rights right there. Sir, I, I, I'm without speech here on the podcast. You know, I'm supposed to be talking, but, you know, absolutely gutted here. As a United fan, not to be worthy of a knockout. To lose to Sofia, that, that wasn't... That was worse. To crash out the way we did in this group after starting the way we did, sir, that's really poor. You know, it, it, the Sevilla knockout stage, we actually were in the knockout stage and played poorly. Uh, this team is probably around the 16, maybe quarters. And so we underperformed, in my opinion. We should definitely, us and PSG should be through. You look at the money we've spent. You look at the players who are playing on our team. You look at RB. Yeah, they were semi semifinalists last season, but I think we got to be doing it. Yeah, of course, because you started the way you did, but it is it was a tough group. It was the group of death. We should have made it out based on the start we had, but are we going to talk about it all day? We got other games to play, and um, if you do that, you're going to have a miserable time, sir, because this team will throw you through their ringer just today, even. You're out of it. The game is basically you want to turn it off, and then it gets to the point where you're shouting post 80th minute because you're in it. They left us in it. You know, it no, just, uh, sorry, it's, it's too much for, it's almost too much. It's like, it, you know, it's almost too much. It, it is too much. And it's a little sad <laughs> because as soon as Harry Maguire leaves the ball for De Gea and then De Gea, like, didn't even go for the save, really. Uh, and, and it goes 3 0. It was really beyond reach. I mean, 2 2 0, we're in it for sure. I agree. Uh, I always thought three would have to be like an absolute miracle. Which we, which we got, right? The penalty plus the de- de- deflected head headed in. Yeah, uh, exactly. That was the miracle. <laughs> that, that was basically your miracle yeah. in. It's, it only gets you to 2-2 two, two is what I'm saying. Yeah. That what really killed us was that Maguire error. Uh, and it's the hay error. I could go. That's plenty to go it, around, bro. Not bad, I mean, he didn't even go for it like 100%. He, the it goal was really that, but sorry, the hay, the goal I think, be, Yeah, yeah, I agree. You no, know, it's... Uh, it, it, dude, in my opinion, you say like, oh, we fought... I, like, we showed fight when we threw the kitchen sink in, but it was a gutless performance until then, in my opinion. 3-0, the way we did it, not organized, no passion, no effort. RB Leipzig, credit to them. Nagelsmann absolutely got it spot on. He watched the game that they lost 5 nothing, and he saw how we should win. Ole just played the same playbook and completely got outworked. The RB Leipzig players wanted it more. They were cheeky. They were fouling. They were physical. They bullied us, sir. They beat us. The midfield was overrun. We were out of position. It was it was ugly uh, from United, in my opinion. It was, and we'll get into it, sir. Should we uh, open for the pod? Quick PSA for the podcast. Uh, you can support us on Patreon. That's right. There are no sponsors on this podcast. Me and Alex want to do it the right way, and we want to stay independent and be supported directly by you, the fans. We don't want any of our opinions on our disastrous ownership, the Glazers, to be swayed by any media interests. So if you want to support us directly, Patreon is the best way to do it. You can check out our Patreon page, www.patreon.com slash American Red Devils. You can contribute monthly, anything from a dollar to twenty dollars a month, and we send out uh, stickers, pins, and scarves depending on your tier. Shout out to Steve Godel. He is our sir, Bobby Charlton stand supporter. He signed up this past week. You are the real MVP, Steve. Really appreciate the support. Also, check out our independent fan content at www.americanreddevils.com. We have an amazing blog run by Alex, and we have some great merch. Click on store there. You can see our shirts and scarves and pins and stickers. And if you want to part with some cold, <coughs> hard-earned cash, drop five stars on iTunes. That's a great way. That's how we're found, sir. Uh, some cheeky banner. There's some great reviews there. If you're ever bored, you should read them. They're a riot. Cheeky better keep it cheeky. I'll tell you what, write a review after uh, you watch this game, watch the highlights. That'll keep you real hot. <laughs> but we hey, pre- appreciate the fans. Listening, yeah. If you're listening to this pod, you are like a true OG Manchester United supporter, right? Because you don't you don't dig deep for a pod like this, sir. No, Only the hardcores. No doubt, sir. It's uh, what do they call it? What, uh, where is L V G? There you go. And uh, only in, in uh, sex masochism. That's then it is allowed. That's allowed. That's basically the equivalent of re- going through this game again, sir. So appreciate all the American Red Devil fans around the world. 
uh, who support us on Patreon, who write reviews, who buy merch, who go to the blog. We appreciate it. It goes a long way because uh, you think it's hard listening to the pod, sir. How about breaking down this game, sir? <laughs> this 3-2 loss to RV Leipzig. <laughs> Sir, it's not, it's not, this is easy. I like doing this. You know, I like thinking about what went wrong. Why are we doing this? I like noodling on it, sir. Maybe, maybe you don't want, maybe you want a break. Sir, that, it, it, the ups and downs, man. That's all I got to say. Yeah, but that's like, that's this club. And I, that's what I was trying to say is, you know, like everyone is so, I think all the United fans worldwide are dying because they want us to be the Manchester United of old. And sir, I've gone through the five stages of grief and I've come to the acceptance that we're just like an Everton plus. So I'm like happy. <laughs> no, we're Manchester fucking United. We're just in a lo- <laughs> bit of a lull. We're rebuilding. You can see progress. I mean, I did. We lost today. And let's talk about the starting 11. I think that's the best place to start because you could call sir. it, you could chop it up a bunch, bunch of different ways. Sir, sir. You're like, I'm still, all I'm trying to say is Manchester United of old semifinal final champions league like guaranteed sir world beating side win the league we're going to take another cup in england as well then we're going to go deep in champions league every single yeah, under season Fergie, under that, Fergie. Is gone. that is gone all i'm saying is that is gone yeah. that might come back might come back not now not now <laughs> we're not manchester united of old <laughs> even if ole is successful at this club and wins titles he will not be fergie no one could be Fer- like that run will i don't think will ever be repeated 12 titles it, okay. it, just, it was an unprecedented run, to be said. But th- we're getting Should on a tangent. Should be in the Champions League every year? Yes or no? Of course. That's not the point. Should we be getting kicked out of the knockout stage? Uh, I mean, should we be getting kicked out of the group stage in any way, shape, or form? It depends what, depends what the group is. Uh, yeah, and normally, no. no, you would say so. But did, did Fergie, the greatest manager in the history of managers, ever get kicked out of the group stage? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Tough yeah. group yes. stages many times. <laughs> Was it, did he get fired because of it? You know, he's, he'd accomplished a lot more. Years. It's been seven years. We, <laughs> it's it's been seven we, years. we had a we lot have, of shit football in the last seven years. Yeah, we've been playing poor lane Champions League for seven years. So that that's all I'm trying to say is that, you know, the semifinals, you know, deep runs. This this is what I, I, I kind of have those expectations still. And then when you crash out of the group stage, it hurts that much more because you, you know, that's you play to win the game, sir. You play, don't play to just play it. I'm with you. All right, so you want to jump into the lineup? Yeah. Um, so we're at the Red Bull Arena in lovely Leipzig, Germany. That starting 11 is De Gea and Net. It was a back three. Lindelof, McGuire, and Shaw. We had AWB and Telus out as uh, wingbacks. And then we had a midfield of Matic, McTominay, Bruno, and a front two of Greenwood and Rashford. Sir, what do you think when you saw this? Look, uh, I called something similar to this. I think I put in Twan Zabi for Shaw. I think ultimately that probably wouldn't have been, would have been the better move. Shaw was out of position on the second goal, and I don't think uh, Twan Zabi would be thinking that way playing the back three. Regardless, I thought this was the right move. Defend, really play the back five. Pick your chances. You're going to get some. Draw and you're in. You know, so I thought a conservative back three would do it, right? And then obviously we saw what happened, where people are getting caught up position going forward. That didn't make sense to me, but on paper, I actually uh, did like and rate this lineup. I just wish they were a little more conservative in the first minute, sir. No, I was with you. I actually liked this lineup because we had played it so well against PSG on the road. And we were in a good position, right? We only needed the draw. So you'd think sitting back, absorbing pressure, being well-organized, high work rate, and then countering and ripping them open, that would work to high success. But when you don't show up from the jump, it's hard to do a back three. Anyway, hopping into that game, sir, it opened hot, end-to-end stuff, and it didn't take long in the third minute. Justin Ball beyond Forsberg. It could come to Angelino, who scores one minute 50. Leipzig lift off. It is the former Manchester City star who pisses Manchester United. The bonus on this occasion. Excuse me, second minute, sir, not the third minute. Um, Angelino making him look like a world beater. Where's the defense? Looks like we pushed everybody forward. Not well organized, just an ugly goal to give up. Reminiscent of some other goals we've given up over the last 12 months. 
Look, Angelino, uh, RB Leipzig is the leading scorer, sir. We always knew the attack was going to be coming down the left-hand side. And with him, obviously, they had no number nine out there. They played with a false nine. Uh, Aaron Wamasaka marking the wrong man. The fact that he shouldn't be thinking about Angelino over his left shoulder all day uh, says it all with Manchester United. I think uh, something got lost there. The instructions weren't good enough. Wamasaka marking the wrong man, really. And, and, he, and even then, he should have got the block. Uh, because he's so good, but he really was out of position. He was out of position playing a role he's probably not comfortable doing, and you're right, because that goal, we looked like we just didn't know what he was doing, and he's such a natural right back, so it almost didn't make sense. He didn't to tackle it. I, I, I'm with you. Angelino, Angelino, Angelino. That has to be his job all day. Angelino, like, you can't go, f- like, the idea of playing the back three, Aaron Wambasak is playing wing back. He's got to be, he's got to be in position. Angelino's the number one threat. It's like, to make this error this early in the game, it makes me question the instructions because Aaron Wambasaka is the player, in my opinion. I, th- th- this is not this was not well uh, coached. And anyway, more uh, seventh chance, seventh minute, another chance for Angelino down the left, being completely exposed. Ninth minute, actually a great chance for United for Greenwood. Probably should have scored if he's in form, but test the keeper early. Um, end to end stuff, sir. And then- uh, look. Soft, soft from Greenwood. Real soft. That has to be a goal. Uh, that's not like him. Uh, he's young. I'll give him a pass. Yep. And then in the 13th minute. Angelino. Whipped in by Angelino. High Tara two. Red Bull have wings. Yeah, Red Bull have wings. <laughs> Walk off. So um, it's just like bad defending. I mean, it looks like we didn't know what, how to play the back three. Maybe it was Shaw instead of Twanzaibi. Twanzaibi played it so well uh, against PSG. It just, we look completely lost. As bad as the first one, second one was just as bad. Well, Shaw is like pretty much in central midfield here. And then it kind of gets switched to Angelino. And then Tellus has to mark two men on the back post. He does get pushed, uh, like Ole mentions. But Luke Shaw kind of in no man's land, and he doesn't get back to cover open man at the far post. And we make two pretty, uh, really poor uh, defensive errors in the first 13 13 minutes in, like, arguably one of the most critical games uh, this season. I mean, to not get out of the group and only to need the draw and to be, like, Swiss cheese at the back to start is insane. I mean, there's no excuse for this team. It's unprofessional at best. It was something else because it didn't stop there. Seventeenth minute, another chance on the left. They should have been three 0 up, um, and we just looked like, yeah, we had no clue. Completely lost. You probably would have been better just doing a four four two, four two three one. You need. A, uh, I thought you we need a sub in the first twenty minutes. I, I thought like, yeah, yeah, you almost start cutting people out at that point because twenty ninth minute goal save interception from Shaw after AWB gave it away. We just we didn't we lost our head. It, it was like we almost lost the game in the, you know in the first thirty minutes. No, we were completely overrun in the middle of the park. And then the wings were just like the defending in the back three was shambolic. So, look, uh, I think Ole should have just subbed. And I think the players need to – I think Shaw had to come off. You know, I think you go back to the back four. I think you bring in another player in the midfield, whether it's Donnie or Pogba. I, You know, I think you need to kind of shore it up here, do something really drastic because you're down two and you need to get a goal. Right, you, you know, like the game has changed in the thir- first thirteen minutes, and I again Ole a little too late to react, and even then the subs. It's a Shaw on Shaw's got the meat sweats. We know Luke Shaw takes a while to get into fitness, sir. I mean, he does, he looked like he had the meat sweats. No, it's a big game for him to th- be thrown back in. Anyway, is right. Thirtieth minute goal for Leipzig. Disallowed. Lucky to get out. Could have been four 0 at this point, and then th- you know, kind of. Turned on a little bit at the, the very end of the first half. Golden chance for Rashford. 33rd minute, nothing came of it. And then 39th minute, another good chance. Nothing comes of it. Um, and like you said, it, it's a big move to make a sub in the first half. It's not injury. That, you know, I agree, sir. You, you go down 2-0. If it was 3-0, you probably, you're forced to do it. Um, but it was at that point, you know, where I wouldn't have been surprised a double sub at half. Well, the one thing is they clearly neutralized Bruno Fernandes in the middle of the park. Mott and McTominay were not managing the ball at all whatsoever. And then we were defending Shambhavli at the back. So you move to the four, it shores things up, and then you get an extra player in the middle of the park to kind of... We really were missing Fred, sir, at the end of the day. You know, obviously I've been a critic, uh, a little critical of Fred, but I, we were missing him today. Totally. 
his work rate would have gone a long way. Break up play, Matic. He it just it wasn't vintage stuff. But didn't we beat them if the full, we beat them with the back four and the diamond, sir? So I don't know why. why like why change it? It's a good question, sir. We went uh, not to do a, a diamond, but to a back four sub beginning of the second half. Donnie Van Deby come on for tell us. It did make an impact. United came out better in the second half. Obviously, that's what we do. But RB Shaw looked off, though. I think Shaw looked off. And I think she was the player to take, not tell us. Would you, do you think Telus was the right guy to take off? I didn't, but maybe he's got eyes on the weekend because he thought this game was already past him. Um, yeah. They were very compact defending. They, they defended well, you have to say that. 55th minute, great chance for United. Bruno gets in a ball in from a free kick that's like perfect. Someone should be at the end of it. Cavani would have been at the end of it. Maybe even a Gallo, but no one's there. And then 60th minute, sir. That, that chance sums up Harry Maguire. I mean, he's a defender, sir. I I, I agree. He's, he sh- yeah. like there's a lot of things that could have gone differently today. I you know I blame it all on Harry Maguire. I think is a little unfair. It's got to be there, right? Yeah, but you can say the same about. I think Rashford was close to the end of it. You know, there are chances. The, the game, it's a razor's edge. It's a game of inches. There's there's going to be a million things like this where you can point the finger at somebody. I can easily blame De Gea for his third goal that he gives up. Maguire was. Anyway, um, Pogba comes on 60th minute with Williams um, for Matic and, sir, I have the, the stats wrong. Who was the other player that came off when Brandon Williams came on? It must have been Luke Shaw. Luke Shaw did, yes. He got the yellow. Yep. And then changes a little bit. 60th, 6th minute, Bruno had a good pop, 25 yards out, forces the keeper into a good save. United, so we did start, you know, clicking a little bit once Pogba came on. Bruno, 67th minute, hits the crossbar from a free kick. I mean, this was like the big moment, right? You don't get that goal, which what I thought, you know, obviously catalyst us into a win. And then, sir, in the 69th minute. Savage, sir. Angelino. In goes Clyde! So I have to believe that Dean Henderson is all over that ball all day long. And I know why, you know, I think I know why De Gea was picked because of his experience. And, you know, he's a big time keeper in Europe, um, but he has that problem. So he went with his feet, should have just dove for the ball. Old English goalkeeper is diving for that ball, get kicked in the face. No big deal. Hey, I'll tell you one thing, sir. Dave's out, Hendo's in uh, at the weekend. That was soft from De Gea. I saw him on the pitch. And in this game, it didn't give me confidence. You know, he didn't give me the same confidence Hendo uh, would give me. And also Hendo playing the ball at the back with those, like, serious boots. I mean, like, getting deep, Rashford stretching it. I just – he's the keeper, dude. It, it, it's it's unfortunate to have the, the shot stopper and everything. This one, it looked like he didn't want to get injured. Didn't give it 100%. We're down 2 nil, And there's no excuse, dude. I, he should probably get – he, he should probably get benched at the weekend. No, I'm with, uh, I'm with and, you. I'm with you, dude. He's the most expensive goalkeeper on salary in the world. He, pays, he has paid twenty five million dollars a year. He and he's afraid of getting it is because I hate to say it. The two things that were huge in this game that it's not why we lost. Right? There's a million things that had to come together, but it's the physicality that he lacks. He has lacked ever since you know last couple of years, especially you know uh, being a little bit shy to go for the ball in the air, and then the distribution, sir. Today was huge. It was like he was not, he did okay, but like Hendo is legit and moved the ball 70, 80 yards down the pitch. If we had it today, I think it would have gone a long way. No, it's that little edge. uh, And obviously, I do like to have McGuire has to be slated here, too. Uh, You know, he looked like as slow as the Titanic, sir. You know, it's like he's got to put this ball out, he's got to deal with it. He kind of leaves it for De Gea again. It just, He's the captain of Manchester fucking United, and it looks like he doesn't have fight at this point in the game. It's just like you look at you you look at Van Dyke coming into Liverpool. What type of leader does he look like? You look at Maguire. He's like, dude, he's out in Greece making a fool of himself. Right. He looks like a complete baby bitch. He's like, oh, I can't turn it up for the first 20 minutes, sir. I mean, I love Harry. I read him, but he, he looks like he, he needs to be a little tougher, sir. He needs to be a little tougher. This whole team needs to be tougher. The toughest person on the team is Bruno Fernandez, uh, and they stifled him. 
But, you know, to criticize Harry, I, he could be criticized. The whole team is culpable. The whole staff is culpable. Everyone is. So I'm, I'm not going to go on a Harry Maguire tangent. Not no, today. He hangs his head. He doesn't he like, you know, it's like, you're right. Bruno should be the captain then. That's all I'm saying. Like, if you're the captain, you can't hang your head at United. You got to fight back. You got to yell at people. You got to get people up for it. Sir, there, it. Harry does it. He's like Harry Kane. You know, it's a Harry Kane team talk. Anyway, not working. 72nd minute. United were pushing forward. Ball falls to green one of the box, forcing the keeper into another good save. 76 minute great headed chance for uh, Rashford. He doesn't really get an end of it. You know, Cavani, once again, some of these chances, man, they could have been big ones. 78th minute, Twan Xavier for Lindelof. Clearly, he's thinking about the weekend. I get it, right? Save your center backs for the weekend. Fosu Mesa came on as well, sir. I think you missed that one. Yeah, uh, excuse me, sir. I think you're right. And then in the 80th minute, it's gone long. Greenwood's interested. Canate has lost it. Greenwood is clear of him here. Canate went leaning in. It's a penalty. What's going to happen? You know, any sort of contact with Greenwood, and he felt he was just pulled back slightly. Now he will say it's shoulder on shoulder, and it should be legal. But from the referee's view, it, it probably looks like he's just pushing him in the back. I mean, I think Greenwood just goes down on feeling the contact. Fernandez. Yeah. Just maybe, just perhaps, maybe, possibly, Manchester United get a glimpse. Sir, today's going to be a Manchester United pity party, but I can't help but call out Bruno Fernandez. And you didn't get everything right today, but the man has got to be our captain. You're absolutely right. He's the heart of this team, pushing for everything. The crossbar that that you know could have been the difference maker, but he never stopped trying. He shows what it's like to be a Manchester United player. Old school has everything you need. He just if we had eleven Brunos, we'd be we'd win the treble. Dude, I mean, Bruno is the new Cristiano Ronaldo, sir. You saw that free kick. Inches. We're talking inches, like you mentioned. Uh, could have been 2-2 two, two here. I think. I honestly think De Gea and Maguire are so soft that if we act, Bruno hits that free kick, they actually like give a shit on that 69-minute goal. I mean, that's the mentality, dude. It's like I'm telling you, it's all mentality. You know, they're hanging their heads. And like this one, now we're in it. Like you said, oh, we got a goal. Now everyone wants to win. Like, why? <laughs> like, why wasn't this? Where was this urgency before? And it's like, now we're back in it. It's like. 82nd minute. Long and again by Fernandez. Pop us up. It's in. It's in. Now then. Oh, that's it. Struck an arm. Sir, it was in. It counted as in. Um, and it was game on at this point. No, and then there was the uh, almost the own goal. From the RB, RB Leipzig defender, Paul Pogba, I will give him credit. We looked better with him on the field. He came on and opened things up in the middle of the park. He had another great at cross, and the RB Leipzig defender almost put it in the own net. I mean, the margins for error here are so slim. It wasn't enough, sir. 3-2, Manchester United out of the group. He asked why we're out. It's because we tied on points with PSG. The tiebreaker goes to the goal differential that we had in our head-to-head. And PSG with that last goal at Old Trafford ends up icing it, sir. That is the reason why we're out. So that would have been the difference because they got the draw. Their game was canceled yep. because the players walked but off. Then it would have gone to head to head goal difference, and then we had them. So then we could have been rooting for Istanbul whenever they do play that match that was suspended. So the reason why we're out is because that last goal at Old Trafford, sir, it's a tough one to take as a United fan. A lot of blame to go around, obviously. Uh, you know, I was kind of saying McGuire. Need to see a little more out of him. That was kind of, that that 69th minute. You can give up the early goals. You can get the tactics wrong, but that to me shows why we're not going to be in the knockout stage of the Champions League. No professional team should play that way. That's the lowest bar. That's like comical stuff, sir. Sideshow Bob. There you go, sir. Match reaction: uh, RB with 45 percent of the ball, United with 55 percent. Uh, shots on target. They had four to our seven, 11 shots overall for United versus the five from them off target, 10 quarters for United, 17 fouls for RB versus R seven. Sir, what'd you find? What'd you think about the fouls in this game? First half, especially how about the, you see the ref putting his arm around the captive from RB in the tunnel, like having a moment. <laughs> there were some no, calls. Uh, they, they played harder. They wanted it more. That is at the end of the day, 
they they bullied us. They beat us to every ball. They suffocated us in the first 20 minutes, sir. They just took it to us in their house. They absolutely took it to us. You know, like it, it, there's no excuses. We just got outplayed, dude. We they they took care of Bruno, and then they just murdered us at the back. Yep, simple as that, sir. Could have been a lot uglier. Um, let's talk about stats. Ole Gunnar Sol- Solskjaer has lost six of his ten Champions League matches as a manager. He's won four, and he's the first manager to lose six or more times in their first ten games in the competition while in charge of an English side. Uh, Manchester United have conceded three or more goals in consecutive Champions League games for the first time since April 03. So even Fergie did it. <laughs> Sir, whatever. Excuse me, actor. Uh, United exited at the group stage at the Champions League campaign for the first time since 15 16 under LVG. Well, we haven't been in it that often. Uh, RB Leipzig are unbeaten in their past six home games, yada, yada. And since his United debut, who else in February? No player in Europe's top five leagues has scored more penalties in all competitions than Bruno Fernandez. He's level at 13 with your boy, Cristiano Ronaldo, sir. Ooh. And we need, to, we need a little Cristiano Ronaldo mojo at Old Trafford, sir. I'll tell you what. Uh, we'll get to the news a little bit later. We need a pog out, Ronaldo in. Sir, I need it. Give it to me. That's that's what I need, sir. Sir, I 2020 has been so shit. It's the least 2021 could start with. January, swap the I love it. Oh, what do we know, sir? Here's Ole Gunnar Solskjaer with his take. After the RB disaster. Welcome to the press conference. The manager is here to take your questions on the game. And we'll start with Simon Stone. Ollie, um, who do you hold responsible for the first half performance? We didn't perform as a, uh, as a team well enough. And that's... Uh, uh, and that's always the, the manager's uh, responsibility uh, to uh, to get everyone ready. Uh, we knew they were going to come at us. We knew they were going to put crosses in the box. And um, unfortunately, we, we conceded two, two goals um, and we never got going. Um, it's obviously very frustrating, Liam. How, I know you keep getting asked this, but you, you're really good at coming back, but you keep giving yourself this mountain to climb. How much do you need to nip this in the bud? You know, in games uh, earlier now, with that we've conceded the first goal, we've played pretty well. Uh, today, we just didn't turn up uh, until they scored the second goal. Suddenly then, uh, we started playing again. They created some, oh, we had one chance maybe on 1-0. Mason had a good chance there. And but after two 0 we started playing. Second half was one way traffic more or less, and uh, the one chance they had, they uh, they managed to score. So on three 0 it's going to be difficult. But they all gave everything, very good character, effort. I can't fault anyone, and um, we were close to getting the third. And that's that would have been some achievement uh, against a good team like Leipzig. All right, sir. Ole, Mr. Nice Guy, what do you uh, what do you think of what he had to say today? I think Ole, Mr. Nice Guy, sir. Uh, what do you make of it? I mean, he's right. We didn't show up. Uh, the thing about Ole that I respect is that he does, for the most part, you know, shoot us straight. And he's right. He's like, they didn't show up. Keep We don't show up. And then all of a sudden, 2-0, we did show up. But you, we can't do that. Top teams don't do it. If we don't get that right, we will never be a top team under Ole. So it's something he knows. That he, it's going to be the ultimate decider of, of whether he keeps the job is if he can get this team to show up week in, week out. Because we know how good they are. This team is good. This I, I will stand by saying that is that we've seen glimpses of it, sir. We know how good they can be. But consistency is the name of the game. And if you can't be consistent, you're not going to win shit. Okay, so the players are great. But the, and the manager's great, but we but we suck again. I didn't so say like, that. I didn't say that. But you tell me, give me your take. No, no, I'm saying so. We break it down. Players are great. It's a great team. So can we win the Champions League with this team? Can we win the league with this team? I'm just trying to get an idea. You say great. What does that mean? I think we have players. Some play, we have some great players, and we have players that are on their way to great, and we have some players that we need to get rid of because they are toxic to the environment. And the sooner they get out of the club, the better. But. We need to be more consistent. We have like this is the, some of the best football we've seen since Fergie's left. Some of the worst, but some of the best. And on the trajectory overall, it is trending positively, sir. We're better in the league. 
Yeah, everybody's fucking gutted that we got knocked out of the Champions League like this in this performance, the way we did with this position we had with all the strength going into it. The last two games blowing it, but you cannot say, look at all the games over the last 12 months and say, like, there has not been a marked improvement, say, 12 months before that, because there has been. No, I think that's a good I think that's a good, that's a good uh, response, and I'm not being facetious. Nagelsmann ties. Uh, Bayern Munich 3-3 then beats us like that with those players you think he would do better at United or no you think he could be more consistent than Ole Gunnar Solskjaer with the with the exact same team yeah I don't I, I don't who who does who's to say bro it's like this club is barely run it's run by like a family of parasites that suck cash out of it on a quarterly annual basis don't have a director of football, have no intention of appointing one, have a money man who, former investment banker, how much qualification is that? We're both former investment bankers to run the football club <laughs> just so they continue the cash coming out. So it's like, it's going to be hard for any manager to succeed at this club with Glazers in charge, with Eddie, no knuckle Woodward in charge. It's like Nagelsmann, he's not that special. I'd rather, you know, he hasn't won, he hasn't won a Champions League. He hasn't won a league. Semi-final with those players on yeah. that money. And that's like Pochettino logic, bro. It's like, who gives a shit? He got close, didn't win. Yeah, if he wins it with them, then maybe he can be a manager. But right now, there so are, there are managers. The only way you can be the manager of Manchester United is winning the Champions League. And then you Sir, can David manage Manchester Royce United. Be, David right? Royce became the manager of, Cham of Manchester United. There's plenty of ways to become the manager of Manchester United. I'm just making a point that, like, Nagelsmann, I'm not, I'm not hot to hire Nagelsmann. You no, sound, I'm you just sound saying like, like the CV at Nagelsmann is better than only CV when he came into United. That's what I'm saying. So you can't like you can't piss on Nagelsmann's CV. I hear you on Poch. You can piss on Poch's Poch CV all day. I'm not talking about who we should hire. So I'm just saying like generally I will agree with you. And the, and the first thing first things first here at American Devils, don't take your eye off the ball. Hashtag Glazers out. Hashtag Sack Woodward. The club is run like a complete shit show, sir. You hit the nail on the head. Jose Mourinho currently doing a great job at Spurs with pretty much like no money, and 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 he would rather be there than at Manchester United. And I trust me, he would rather be at Manchester United. But the problem with this club is the cancer at the top. It's the ownership. The whole club is run terribly. Uh, communication, everything. That's exactly why Mourinho failed. That's why Woodward didn't back him. Either way, I don't want to see Ole go unless Woodward goes with him uh, in some way, shape, or form, and they bring in a new structure, director of football, et cetera. I'm just saying I think Ole got it wrong today. I think he has struggled the past couple of games. I think his tactics, whatever it comes to like uh, trying to get a team to play more efficiently – to the point where we don't look like we have to throw our game plan out in the first 20 minutes at pretty much every game we've played lately. Uh, you know, that is not going well for Ole at the moment. I'm just going to call it out. That doesn't mean he can't fix it. doesn't mean he can't figure it out. doesn't mean he can't find the best team and kick on and, and try to compete for this title in the English Premier League, sir. I think we're having a great season on that side of the game. I'm just saying, like, I he's learning on the job, and right now, like, we got to fix this whole, like, can't start a match thing because it's becoming – uh, you know, it's becoming a permanent fix. I'll tell you what. Uh, I remember when Ole did start a match and the boys got up for it. Do you remember this? Down the line towards James, but straight to Edison. But straight to McTominay, he's going to have a shot. Oh, it's 2 0. Scott McTominay seals the points in the Manchester derby. Presented with the chance by Edison. He made absolutely no mistake from this. It hasn't been Edison's finest day. It has been his. It has been his as manager, sir. How you feeling headed into this Manchester Derby? Couldn't use a win more. Uh, couldn't use a big win more as well. So how you feeling headed in to Saturday's game? Hey, December fixtures coming thick and fast. Uh, bounce out of the Champions League. Heartbreak. But you know what? There's a huge match. Saturday, December 12th, 9.30 a.m. Pacific, sir. Great kickoff. The Manchester Derby. Boy, the lads better be up for this one, I'll tell you. <laughs> no excuses there. This ain't RB Leipzig. Um, I mean, if we're going to do the excuse factory, I chugga, 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 it would say, hey, now we can focus on the league. We dropped out of the Champions League. Let's make the most of it and make a run of it. And it starts, hey, City win at home. Haven't done well at home in the league this year. It's an important game. <laughs> Dare I say must win, sir. Dare I say. 
look and we talk about Ole, you know, he's getting all the heat, hashtag Ole out online after this RB Leipzig. But you think about his managerial career, there's been none like it, right? This point when Scotty hit this goal, we beat City in our house, clean sheet, two goals, one of the highs. And what happened right after this? Boom. COVID, sir. Everything shut down. Obviously, I think Lask was after this, sir. But this is the last Old Trafford match with fans. Uh, there hasn't been one with fans since. And, you know, it felt like Project Restart. We kind of were able to patch it together. But this was the highest high Ole ever had. He figured everything out with the Fred McTominay midfield. And we haven't really been back since. So let's hope Fred's ready to play on Saturday. Yeah, I mean, there's... um. There's no better feeling than that city game just because the fans were there and then all of the highs and highs that followed in the summer after lockdown or after the pause um, were without fans. So they didn't feel as consequential, even though, like, you know, in many ways, that Leicester 2 0 win is the culmination, finishing the league strong. It was a great run. Um, but that was a game where we didn't have a lot of the frailties that we, we've seen this season, you know. Maybe not the high yeah. highs, but we came out strong, right? Strong 11, played really well. Honestly, played City off the park. Could have won even by even more. Um, but that was a, a 90 minutes where we played top notch. Can we see that this Saturday? I don't know. Yes, yeah, the intensity. It's the physicality. Everyone on it. You know, no errors at the back. You know, tight, sir. Tight football for Manchester United. And, and that's what I expect them to do. I expect them to ball out Saturday. No excuses. Play like a champion. Because they got to get up for it, right? There's been all these excuses. There's no excuses. But they failed to get up for matches. There can be no excuse. I mean, other than the Scousers, City is it. It's the rival. You have no excuse for getting up for it. Um, and also, it's like we're a point above for those looking uh, in the <laughs> city at the table. We got to chip up big wins against big opponents. City, um, you know, it would go a long way. Big three points. I help, help turn the mood after everybody is devastated to drop out of the Champions League. Lifetime versus Manchester. Shitty. We've won 76, drawn 52, lost 54. Sir, coming into it, the last five matches between us, we lost by two. One, uh, we won two to one, then we lost three to one, we won one nil, and then obviously in our house, two nil. There was two League Cup games in there last season, played them quite a bit. We got their number three, two on that run, sir. I mean, Pep versus Ole, Ole usually pips them, but like you said, can the boys get up for that match? First match between the Crosstown Rivals was in October 1891, Manchester United smashed City 5 1 in the FA Cup. Uh, founded in 1880 as St. Mark's West Gordon. It became Ardwick Association Football Club in 1887 and Manchester Shitty in 1894. We covered the history of Manchester Shitty on our prior podcast, the match fixing scandal, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, in history in the 1880s, when they were founded, the construction of the Panama, Panama Canal began, sir. Uh, and Wabash, Indiana, became the first electrical lit city in the world. So that's when shitty was founded. You know, they're not quite PSG founded in the seventies. Uh, they do have some history, but again, Manchester has always been red, sir, all the way back to the 1880s. The club's home ground is, is the city of Manchester stadium in East Manchester to which it moved in 2003, having played at main road since 1923. And the roof doesn't leak, sir. Uh, they play in the sky blue. Everyone knows it. Uh, and you know, they're just shitty. So what else can I say? They hire Pep Guardiola. They have all the money from the Abu Dhabi group, the uh, financial fair play violations. They cheat, they lie, they steal, they fix matches all the way back in the day. We don't like them, hate them, kicking the blue all day, sir, all across the pitch. Sir, we end the pod with kicking the blue and that's not changing anytime soon. Um, uh, and there's a reason for it. Don't let them forget. It's, you know, or oil money FC, unfortunately, um, because all their success is around those flush owners breaking financial fair play left, right, and center. I thought those rules were there for a reason, so they couldn't just uh, do what they've been doing, but it doesn't seem like that matters anymore. Didn't they have like the big CIS overturned 12 months ago, the Champions League ban? That feels like it was yesterday. Well, it's when you acquire the information illegally, it can't <laughs> be admitted into a court of law, sir. That, that's the issue. Oh, that uh, jumping to physio room injuries. Phil Jones, who are you? Anthony Martial and Cavani. Hopefully, sir, we're praying to the football gods, the hamstring gods, 
get Martial, get Cavani back. I feel like having different options up top has helped United. It's helped Solskjaer. Uh, I think we need him. We need him for City. I think we do because he, I think we need leadership as much as we can find, and he's a leader just like Bruno. Um, so hopefully he's ready to go. I think he'd start over Martial. Sir, what is your lineup for the match? This is who I got. We don't have a back three in sight. A w, uh, Dino in net. Hey, uh, sorry, bud. Back four, AWB, Lindelof, McGuire. Tell us a midfield of Fred, Donnie Van de Beek, and Bruno, and a front three of Rashford, Greenwood, Cavani. So we're going for blood. At home, OT. Going for the win. Big win. Let's go. Four, two, three, one. Hendo, Wambasaka, McGuire, Lindelof, Tellis, Fred McTominay, Bruno, Rashford, Martial, Greenwood. I think, sir, we're pretty close there. You got the Van de Beek. Uh, I got McTominay. Ooh, it's gonna be a good, there's gonna be space. I mean, it's gonna be really exciting. There, can't wait, sir. Never been more excited for a derby. Sir, they can lose. They gotta fight for every blade across, though. They gotta show passion, and they gotta kick a blue. That's my rules for the derby. Booking the bookies, sir. Manchester Manchester United is what minus one thirty. No, Manchester United is plus. 3.30, sir. Metro City is uh, must win. <laughs> we're like the, the favorite. Huge United, we're like, Manchester United. We be, you look at the lifetime record. I thought we were the favorites. United plus 3.30. That's a great bet. Bet it all day. I, 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 I agree, sir. I mean, plus 3.30 is ridiculous. Uh, I do not bet on Manchester United, though, uh, unless uh, unless we're across the pond. Uh, Man City, um, minus 130, the heavy favorites to score Aguero, Jesus, Sterling, plus 380, 450, 460, respectively. Cavani plus 700, Bruno plus 800, Rashford plus eight. I mean, these are great lines. You know, United's going to score. You know, we could easily score first. You know, <laughs> I haven't uh, scored first in a while. It feels like I haven't scored first. We're always, like, coming back. So I take the win, but maybe not first goal score because I feel like I like got Guerrero eighth minute. <laughs> and then we're like, oh, shit, let's wake up. <laughs> Given those those are the odds, what is your score prediction, sir? Sir, 4-2. Instant classic, barn burner. United go down early. <laughs> Double sub at half, <laughs> four two, win. Keep the roll going. Two nothing. United win. We get the clean sheet. We repeat the score before uh, everything locked down due to COVID, sir. That roar of that crowd at Old Trafford, man. You, do, I haven't thought about fans in a while, but you miss that. It's yeah. like you miss that. That that's why going to games. And if you haven't been, we highly encourage everyone to travel to Old Trafford. Because just the experience of the ground, the atmosphere is unbelievable. And, you know, being there for that McTominay would have been priceless, sir, that winner. So things we lost in 2020 added to the list. Um, that will be, you know, one of the fond things of 2021, hopefully, is to see a packed OT at some point. So looking forward to that. That's the news, sir. Sir, take me through it. <laughs> take me through it. <laughs> sir. You thought this match was shit. This news is shit. <laughs> take me through it, sir. Mino Riola comes out on uh, Fabrizio Romano podcast, which which you got to pay pay to listen to. So, you know, we don't, we don't listen to it here. But the quote came out. Riola said, I can say that it's over for Paul Pogba at Manchester United. He pushes for the January transfer. He should be sold. Uh, Everyone on the internet freaking out about this. And I'm just like, haven't we seen this every transfer window for the last four transfer windows? So why are you surprised? Everyone is like freaking out. I'm like, this is just the same old shtick from Mina Riola. And yes, Pogba would have been sold if COVID didn't hit, sir. I mean, this is just kind of like... But why are you whinging at United? It's like really a COVID issue and like your player can't even play at the moment. So how much United's not going to sell them. No one's going to pay. Oh, where's the buyer at? And this, sir, it's not that it's more the same. It's the timing. Timing's everything in life. And the fact that this comes out before, arguably before the biggest game of the season or like the biggest stretch of games of the season to date, Paul Pogba finally scores a goal, comes up for a game. Good for him. And then timely as ever, his, his boogeyman, right? He gets to play good cop. And his agent plays bad cop, dude, and just gets to be like a complete dirtbag. And Paul Pogba can feign innocence. But at the end of the day, dude, he works for Paul Pogba, gets paid by Paul Pogba. And Paul Pogba is responsible for what his agent says. So at the end of the day, this is like 
it's going to leave a real bad taste on a lot of United fans, myself included, about how Paul Pogba's rep is going to be because he's on his way to like Di Maria status. Di Maria status because this, dude, this is bad. It's like, we know you want to leave. We get it. But this is a huge week. And what are you trying to get another manager fired? It's like, we get it. You don't want to be a Manchester United. We're all over it. <laughs> we have Bruno Fernandez. We have a new love. But it's really classless to do this again, timing. It's like, they got, well, do you have no shame, my man? Do you have no shame? Sir, he did it. He did it because the timing couldn't be better <laughs> for him. No, but you understand? Like, that's what you, do, that's everyone is like, because he knows that everyone's going to freak out the most. Paul Pogba hits a banger, comes back in the side. You know, everyone's kind of like talking good about Paul, and he's going to say, up, oh, this is my opportunity to try to sell Paul Pogba. Hype train, hype train, try to sell them in January, make that money. That's the only thing Real is worried about. So it's almost like in – I really do think in the in 2020, in the age of the internet, agents, everything, it seems to me agents can talk about their clients and deals. It just seems like it's taboo, but I, I, I don't know. Other than that, Paul Pogba looked great when he came on the pitch, almost like help us draw and get in the Champions League. So at the end of the day – I just don't give a shit what Riola says. So who cares? Paul Pog was on our team. He's on a contract till 2022. As long as when he put, goes on the field, he plays well, which he did. He literally came on and like, you want to hate Paul Pog? Watch him come on that pitch. Dude, Sir, I, dude he did. it's he over, they over put their hand, bro. It's not the, like, what, he, when he shows up and decides he wants to play. Yeah, he's lights out. Um, but he wasn't even getting in this 11. And yeah, he got the big goal on the weekend to start the, the comeback. But bro, it's like, I, I cannot be the only United fan with battery acid in my mouth taste. Like, you saw that. Everyone's up for the game, and you see that again, and you know it. You know, oh, well, it's real uh, doing what he needs to do. But that's because Paul Will lets him, and it's like, we've let him. We've let, you know, Paul Will, like, run amok at this club, and we just... What I'm saying is, like, he is going Di Maria's ass for me, sir. He's, like, he's going, like, full snake. It's, like, you do that. You keep doing that. That's, like, so toxic for the club. We're on the we're on the upper, and he's, uh, like, doing that. It's a really bad look, bro. It's a really bad look. Look, I agree, but then you can't bring him on against RB Leipzig. You can't play. Why not? The, Why can't you bring him on? Is, he didn't start. He, no, but... Either you really, either the club and Ole Gunnar Solskjaer really care about this agent and Paul Pogba saying something, and then he trains with U twenty three like Sir Alex. You can't have it both ways. You can't be offended and then play him. You know, it's just one of those things where you're kind of <clears throat> you're kind of giving in to Paul Pogba. I think you got to make a call, and I think the call is like, hey, his agent's going to talk a bunch of shit, and we're not going to sell him. Like literally, Ed Woodward, if he was a good CEO, he would go out and be like. Hey, me and Ariola, shut up, and we're not going to sell Pogba unless someone pays 80 million pounds, and if you want to bring me someone who can, then I'll talk to you. That's what he should say, and then it's it's a Pogba issue. It's not a United issue. United have him under contract until 2022, and no one will pay the money that Riola and Pogba want for him, so he's got to stay, so shut up. That's no, how but, I – But he makes think, it a United problem by, like, making it all about him again and how he wants to leave and how he's unhappy to get paid $20 million a year to play football – it just makes it a United it, dude. It mucks it up. It's like not a good look. It like yeah. he looks like a like a bad individual. Even though everything we hear about Paul Paul is he's a really nice guy. But if you employ a scumbag to do your bidding for you, it's like it's facto. Ah, uh, sorry, you're not gonna have a good rep, dude. It's like he's going to burn every bridge on the way to Manchester United that he can find, and that's what he's doing. Because the timing is going to be remembered by certain fans and certain players. Right? You don't think Bruno's like? I don't think Bruno's gonna talk about <laughs> Paul Pogba when he leaves this team. What did you say I, on this pod? You were like, Paul Pogba only cares about Paul Pogba, Paul Pogba, and Paul Pogba. So I think he, everyone knows that. He doesn't care if Riola says anything. He doesn't care about the team and their mentality and the press machine associated with Manchester United versus RB Leipzig. He's just thinking about how can Paul Pogba get out of Manchester United and get paid a ton of money to go play somewhere else. And that's what he's doing. So, like, you got to know that's his game plan. So you got to deal with it. And you say, okay, well... You know, either we play you or we get rid of you. So, you know, it's up to Ole and Ed Woodward. And I don't know. Those two guys can make a good decision. <laughs> you know, as far can Ed Woodward sell him for enough money? No. So then we're stuck with him. And then, like, is Ole going to bench him and, like, send him to U23s? No. So then we're kind of always in this no man's land. At the end of the day, it's just, you know, you got to kind of make up your mind. And I, I just don't care what Riola does. I rate what Pogba does on the pitch, sir. And he played well today. He played very well after these comments. Yeah, but it doesn't. He played well. Then he doesn't play well. You know, um, it's no excuse. It's not. Does pay the money though? Do you do you think someone's gonna pay like 
W- we like, don't need United to pay the money. Gonna, it's gonna, it, it'll be known as like one of the worst transfers we ever do, sir. This will be a like terrible transfer. Like end of Paul Pogba will be known as one of the worst transfers in United's modern history because we will lose money on him. You know, we had, we won a couple pieces of Europa League silverware. Um, but at the end of the day, it's like a DOF would have shipped them already because Ole is like, I can't do with this guy. I, I brought Bruno in. I probably brought Donnie in to get to replace Paul Pogba before we replace Paul Pogba. But at this point, you just want a player swap. I take 50, like a 50 million value player or uh, a priceless player who we're about to talk to we'll talk about in a second, sir. No, I, I look, I totally agree. I, I actually think he'll run down the contract. I don't think anyone's going to buy him. So, you know, jokes on Paul Pogba at the end of the day. Uh, but just remember, international break with France, Pogba was saying all these same things Riola said, and that was, what, three weeks ago? So, I mean, it's really been the same thing always with these two, and nothing's changing. So, you know, I just think we better get used to it because Ed Woodward sure as hell isn't going to find a buyer. <laughs> no, he's not. But this is, this is like if Riola says it, Pogba said it. There's no difference at this point. Yeah, I think he, what he said in France is like, I'm not basically not happy, like Deschamps and him and this whole like parade, like saying the same thing, dude. Like, so, so, you know, look, I think we should just probably focus on what he does on the pitch and uh, stop talking about Mina Real, even though we always, we always take the bait, sir. It's a passionate topic here on the podcast. Uh, next bit of news, Manchester United shirt sponsor Chevrolet are ready to bankroll a move to bring global superstar Cristiano Ronaldo back to Old Trafford from Juventus, sir conspiracy theory here i play the x-files music what do you think you had to rate it so, at a 10 likely of happening being a 10 unlikely happening being a zero what do you say i'm gonna do a five because this year never ceases to surprise me um but here's what i don't like about it sir the, the chevy contract i believe is out next year so that would mean the only way that this have legs that chevy it would be the sponsor bankrolling is because they were going to renew which probably isn't going to happen, right? Because why else would they be bankrolling a deal if they're about to get out of Manchester United as a brand? Um, it could be another, so it could be Adidas or I don't know. But either way, we should be making a move for Cristiano Ronaldo. I love the idea of swapping Paul Pogba for him. Ronaldo's Nike, and he's playing at Adidas right now, obviously. Uh, but yeah, I don't, the Chevrolet thing screams bullshit to me. Also, it's the Daily Mail, so you really can't put any stake into it. Like you said, Chevrolet seems like they're not going to be doubling down on United. Uh, rumors are it would be hair. Uh, either way, that's why this doesn't make any sense to me, sir. Ronaldo coming back to United only could make sense if the meeting with Mendez was true that we, re- we reported on uh, a couple weeks ago and something happens with Paul P, a swap deal, and essentially we can just pay Ronaldo mega money wages, which Manchester United can't afford. It's the upfront transfer fee we cannot. So that is likely the deal where he could come, and I put that as a 1.5, sir. Out of 10? There's a chance, but it's like, Ronaldo doesn't want to come back to United. Look at us. We're not even in the Champions League. Come on. No, it, that, I think that was it. I was like, maybe there'll be legs in it if we make it to the knockout stage, but now it's it probably is a zero. <laughs> you got to be attractive to come to play. Like, as a, like Ronaldo and Messi don't want to go come play for United, who's like struggling for top four and like getting knocked out of the group stage, sir. They want to be going to teams that can win titles. Ronaldo is the number one narcissist. He wants to win silverware, and United don't look like a place that's going to get it anytime soon. Can't see him marrying up with us anytime soon. I mean, uh, nope, probably not. <laughs> I mean, maybe like if Messi got the city and we win the league, uh, yeah. probably not. Sorry, yeah, probably not. But uh, you don't think the Daily Mail's got? You don't think the Daily Mail's onto something? <laughs> yeah. It's like, you know, you're like, yeah, when's the next trophy we're going to win? We're both here on this podcast. Because how many more pods are we going to do before we win a trophy? It's going to be the, gonna be the EFL Cup. Or like another, hundred, Cup. another hundred pods. Another Europa League. League. We're going to be doing Thursday night coverage, sir. Taking the Europa League home, baby. Okay. This guy texted me. He's like, I'm not doing Europa League podcast. <laughs> I, I, said, I, 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 I said, I stand by that. <laughs> I said, we are. I fucking love this club. That's my response. So I'm uh, Thursday nights, baby. Can't wait, baby. We're going to win another trophy. Woo. Thursday nights. So it might come <laughs> down to Europa League to qualify for Champions League. It's actually a benefit uh, to us. <laughs> <laughs> sir, I like that excuse factory. Maybe it's working overtime. Keep it going. All right, sir. Bruno's getting a new deal. Uh, apparently, they're going to bump wages. That's the best decision Woodward's ever made, other than getting cup noodles to sponsor Manchester United. <laughs> Maui Jim Friday is my favorite part of that. Um, but yeah, doubling his contract at 200,000 pounds a week. Easy money. Absolutely. 
No, totally, sir. And uh, look, we have some fan questions. We really appreciate all the hot banner. There's quite a bit of it, sir. We're going to sift through, get you the best comments. Actually, we just do it randomly, so there's no uh, guarantee on how what the quality will be. Uh, <laughs> it's going to start out with, you know, I would say this is high quality at Burkett Mets. I like, I rate his opinions when, you know, the tough times come. He usually tries to stay the ship here. He says, quote, Ever since that goal line clearance in Turkey and stoppage time, this felt inevitable. Just could be seen from miles away gutted. I, I, I feel the same way. I said it at the last pod. It felt like it was just no matter what we did, the bar would keep us out. You know, like everything was against us here trying to qualify. Mate, sometimes sometimes you eat the bar and sometimes the bar eats you. It just it did have a feeling of that tonight, um, especially with the goals, the gutless goals we gave up early. And the fact that we were still in it at half kind of made it feel like, oh, they're going to do as close. But uh, it just wasn't meant to be. Those magic beans ran out. At Blair underscore with underscore no underscore E. Absolutely dreadful defending, but what makes me more livid is this game never should have mattered because we should have lost, shouldn't have lost Istanbul, which is also down to poor defending. I agree. To me, you're like you got to beat Istanbul, but then you saw PSG and RB struggle there too. So it, something about that trip must be pretty hard, you know. For me, the PSG game, that Cavani chip, that Martial chance, we outplayed them. It was ours to win. They would have wilted their baby bitches. Like that was the game to me that we should have iced it. No, but those are the games that you that lose that like, you know, where football's unfair. Um, whereas the you know, the Istanbul game, yeah, the road is a it's a long trip, but uh we didn't show up. We got underplayed, you know, we out got outplayed in that game. And if we had showed up we and gotten at least a draw, that could have been the difference, sir. But you gotta take your chances. All right, I'm just gonna say this one, sir. Don't get fired up. At G M R X I I I all lay out. That's it. Just says it. All lay out. Just got to read it here. At next tweet, at T Zolski, quote, unfortunately, we got what we deserve. We have absolutely nobody to blame but ourselves. Sooner or later, not playing 90 minutes was going to bite us. Not sure how Ole survives this. We were in prime position and blew it. Let the posh rumors begin. Hashtag Ole is no longer at the wheel. Ole is definitely not at the wheel, but... um. You know, I'm not ready to make that decision, and I'm definitely not lining up Mauricio Pochettino as uh, as our guy. I would, we'll do that in another pod, sir. I could lay into him all day. Absolutely, and I just have to think, you can't fire Ole. Everyone's saying you got to fire Ole, and it's like, I agree, this is a terrible loss, but we're doing good in the league, so it's like, you got to let, like, another month or two play out, you know? You got to, like, as long as we're in the top four in the league and we have a, we're not, like, miles off the first place, Dude, we're in good position, man. It's like our bread is buttered in the league. We, we've always been shit in Europe. No, you're, we've always played better in the league than in Europe for sure. So that's why we have 20 league titles and only three Champions League, unfortunately. 21's on the table. Uh, it certainly is, sir. The league is wide open. Yeah. I thought Champions League was wide open, but, you know, cup competition, team like this, you, you can get a run going. But the league, sir, we got to flip the focus back to reality. And there's no excuse for not showing up on Saturday. At Bohan Boy for Life, our boy Devin here started off absolutely horrible. Angelino terrorized Aaron Wabasaka first half. Leipzig completely shell shocked United in the beginning. Gutted does not even begin to describe how I'm feeling. Now we have to show a response against City. I mean, he hit it right. He did. You know, we all feel the same way. It's it's a tough feeling to explain, but we got to pick ourselves back up because. Made for big moments like this, you got to go to Old Trafford, empty Old Trafford, unfortunately, and get a big result against a city team that needs a big result as well because they haven't been great. Um, and we need to take it to them, sir. Old school English football studs studs up when appropriate, <laughs> kick it up blue. At United Dondo, quote: What are Ole's actual tactics and what is our style of play? It seems like we just wait for the players to figure it out themselves. It's getting hard to defend him, sir. Uh, I think Ole tries to switch it to what he thinks is the best for the players he has, but I think he's learned on the job a little bit. And, you know, the back three looked too sloppy against RB, but how could he have known that? You know, I totally right. Cause it came off as a masterclass PSG. Everyone's patting him on the back today. 
players didn't show up, looked lost. Is that on Ole? I mean, I think that was the sound strategy. You know, that made total sense. It's just that we look maybe the 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 personnel were the wrong picks. You do Twan Zabie instead of Shaw. That was probably too much. So it's just this game is brutal. It is like the m- toughest game in the world, the game of games. And there are there's no margin for error, my man. And especially United. This is a club that expects a lot out of its team, out of its manager, and should out of its board and owners, sir. We cannot take the heat off of them, sir. There's a lot of heat on Ole, as there should be. There's a lot of heat on the squad, as there should be in the players. But it's got to be Glazers out, Woodward out all day, every day, because that will continue to be the problem as long as they are around. Yeah, and I, I totally agree. Something's ailing this team, though, and and, and the cure is has to be uh, given by the manager. You know, the uh, inconsistent starts and not turning up. And, you know, Ole, I agree, it's very hard to do. A lot of fixtures, tight turnaround. You know, it's got to be very difficult, this period of football, especially in December. But Ole's still got to do it because he got to get results. And, you know, look, coming back is fine, but you don't come back today. You know, it's going to cost you uh, at Lauren Jr. on Twitter, quote, after the second goal, when we still had a chance to get a draw, David De Gea's distribution was awful. He just kept booting it to RB Leipzig, keep possession. We had them on their heels. We need to transition to Dean Henderson, sir. What do you make? <laughs> no, I, I, I'm with you, man, because that this was the game that kind of did it. Um, big, big game, right? You thought like if it was going to come down to the margin, a huge save. David De Gea is going to be the guy that gives you the save. But actually, in this game, we needed old Dino to just be bashing in the box, distributing it like you know he can because um, he's like a more of a modern modern goalkeeper, right? He's like more relative distribution from the back, and he also, he's physical. We need that. The game is physical, and De Gea, I'm sorry, that foot dot, like today, he's culpable for the third goal all day. Like he has to be there. No, totally agree. Uh, at Ty Kircher, quote, gutted, absolutely gutted by this squad. Can't put together 90 minutes. Atrocious defending when 0-0 gets them through. Nowhere to look but themselves. Hello, Thursday nights, my old friend. That's a solid, uh, solid banter tie. The lows are so damn low. <laughs> Sir, I'm not, we're not getting used to this shit. This Thursday night, we'll do it. I will do it. But we are getting back to Champions League in the 21, 20, Dude, we're not even like doing more than three months of it. And we're going to go win Sorry. it. We'll go win it with the kids. But we're going back. We're going to qualify in the group by winning it, by winning the league. And then, you know, we'll also win the, the Europa League. So we'll double, we'll double qualify. Sir, you know, some people are like, why do you play the whole Champions League theme song? Because we're dying for that music. And it's gone, so, bro. And it's gone. You don't, it's you, don't gone. Get to, you don't get to hear it again for like uh, at least, what, seven months? No, I know. It's it's crazy. But when you have that music, it's like almost brings me to tears because I'm just happy Manchester United are in the Champions League. So we'll get the Europa League, League theme. We'll play <laughs> Sorry, that one. I play as a teaser. It, just, it, is, it does make you like cry. I should have played it just like... Uh. Taking those Angelina goals. Gah, gah, gah. <laughs> Dude, your whole league theme is a banger. <laughs> yeah, you're right. They even have a theme for a lot of <laughs> a lot of Uzbek horns. Uh, they got a theme. Uh, uh, at last, uh, <laughs> this is <laughs> these tweets are getting a little, a little harsh here. <laughs> at Karthik Basan, one first time I'm ready to say Ole out. Two, do we really belong in the Champions League with only one world class player who's truly deserving of it? Three, playing a shit first half and saving face in the second is not a sustainable long-term strategy. Four, we're about to get whooped by City, sir. Ooh, those are four bullets. What do you make? <laughs> I prefer really not to, um, not to speak. If I speak, I am in, in big trouble. In big trouble. And I don't want to be in big trouble. So I don't want to be in big trouble. I got nothing uh, to say. I got, I got nothing to say. Next question. <laughs> At Kelly's own a cat. Wash, rinse, repeat, Thursday nights, here we come. <laughs> Whoa, baby, get, cue up that music, sir. I can't wait to find out what the Europa League intro is because I don't remember. Sir, I think that is the podcast. Look, always tough breaking down a heartbreaking loss. You can hear in our voices, like, you know, Manchester United crashing on the Champions League is, uh, oh, the season, sir. <laughs> oh, the season, hey, sir. Who said it ain't good for your health, bro? Is like, hey, I'm going to die. I'm like, I'm going to die of 34 because of United, sir. This fu- ups sure. and the downs. You know what? Yeah, I'll tell you what. It's not the, the issue isn't not making out of, like, literally the group of death. It was a very bad draw. It's the fact that we beat PSG and beat RB Leipzig and then don't do it. That That's literally the, the, the issue is that, like, you're, like, you're cruising and then you just completely fumble. But you know what? The got the lads got to come back. 
they're either going to crumble on on Saturday or they're going to fight like they've never fought before. And, you know, I look forward to seeing it, sir. We'll, we'll know the first 20 minutes <laughs> how it's going to go. So we live for those moments, don't we? Um, and that's what it's all about. It's about the big, the big opportunity to step up. Uh, I hope Ole picks an 11 that's going to go out there and leave it all on the field. Absolutely. Look, American Red Devils is for fans, by fans. If you want to support the podcast, check us out on Patreon, www.patreon.com slash American Red Devils. Uh, we do it because we don't have any ads. We're just two guys in the bunker, sir. I'm actually in my garage here recording this podcast. Uh, we run the whole web- website and everything, and we want to keep it independent. We want to be supported directly by you, the fans. We think that's the best way for us to do it. Check it out. Uh, write a review on iTunes. Check out the blog, www.americanreddevils.com. We have some amazing content, sir. Absolutely riot article about uh, being a clown for <laughs> Manchester United were, were, <laughs> were better than they are. I mean, we got hot banter there. If you're interested in contributing, email us, AmericanRedDoubles at gmail.com. That is what this platform is about, is giving the fans a voice. We love this community. You guys are the best. Look, the lows are low, sir. The highs are highs. Can't wait till we win that next Premier League title. Could be this year. Could be next year. Could be in 2052. I don't know. Sir, we could, get, we could get relegated. We could win 21. You never know with this side. Yeah, I, oh, I actually think in my response to you when you said we weren't going to do uh, your, your uh, Thursday night podcast, I said, I'll follow this club to division two. <laughs> and as would I, sir, I would follow this uh, league six, but <laughs> there's league six plays a Saturday and then there's Thursday's in Uzbekistan, sir. <laughs> hey, well, we shall see. Look, it's been great, sir. As always, kicking a blue.